Image tracing allows us to take non-vector-based images and convert them for use with our scan and cut. To do this, we click on Image Tracing, choose File, navigate to the drive and folder containing our image, select it and click Open. The image will then be loaded into the image tracing processor. For simple silhouettes like I have here, click on Outline and then Preview. If the turquoise outline around the shape matches the design, click OK. You then have the option to transfer the picture along with the cutting file onto the cutting mat. Note, however, we can't edit the image, we can only edit the outline. As I'm showing here, I can move the outline, but I can't move the image itself. It's purely there as a reference in case we need to do any further editing. Let's try a slightly more complex image, something with a little bit of colour. Same process here, click on Image Tracing, choose File, navigate to your file, select it and click Open. The image is loaded in the same way. We can then click on Preview to see how our current settings will handle, handle this image. It's actually fine if I want to crop out the whole image, but it's not separating out the colours. To do this, I change the tracing options to Colour. Click on Preview again to see what will happen. This has picked up some more areas, but I wanted to get more detail. So I'm going to increase the maximum number of colours to recognise. Click on Preview again. This hasn't changed the result much, so I will again increase the maximum number of colours to 20 and click on Preview again. As that is the maximum number of colours the system can recognise, I will accept this result and load just the cutting file. So here is the result of the tracing. I'm going to resize it so that it fits on the mat and I'll be covering selecting, resizing, aligning and grouping and all of that later in the course when we come on to talk about editing. If I start to disassemble the results you can see that we've got individual shapes for individual colours. So you can then cut these from individual coloured cardstock and then reassemble for your project later on. Do bear in mind that this isn't perfect and the more complexity in your image, the more difficult it is for the system to recognise all of the individual shapes. So for basic image tracing, it's often better to choose a very simple image for example, like the feather silhouette that I showed at the start of this lecture. Let's try one more, even more complicated. And it's this design here that's got lots of individual tones, colours and shapes. As you can see, this takes the system more time to process. And when we click on Preview, again, it's a lengthier process as there's more for the system to look at and recognise. Now, I do have the perfect outline here for these, which does surprise me as it was a very complicated image. So I will click OK and I will load the image along with the cutting outline. And you'll see the issue that we have with this on this occasion. And it's that the image was much bigger than the cutting mat initially. And therefore, because I can't change the image size, even if I change the outline, I would then have to work out what size to print the original image. To use images this complicated, you might like to look at one of the additional kits that Brother offer, which is the print to cut option. That's basic image tracing. And as I say, it works best on simple outlines with block colors.